Hey Aquarius, welcome to Catalyst Energies and welcome to your new moon astrology forecast. This is for Aquarius rising, Aquarius sun, and Aquarius moon. So thank you for being here. My name is Dee. Um, I'm really grateful that you're here. So we're going to talk about the new moon in Aquarius in your sign um, and the major themes leading up to the Leo full moon that's going to be on the 16th of February. So I don't know, you know, the fixed signs just in general, right? Um, Aquarius, Leo, Taurus, and Scorpio, all these fixed signs. Any any strong connection to the mid-range of those fixed signs that you may have otherwise is still going to be impacted by this new moon, I think, very strongly. But Aquarius in particular, not only has there been um, a pretty significant um, attention and, uh, energy and sensitivity. And now that Mars is in Capricorn, a lot of action in the realm of the collective karma, right? In the realm of the, uh, the astral, the astral realm, the Akashic realm, all of the 12th house areas, right? The social and collective karma, um, that we are all part of. And that isn't just our own karma. It is everything. So it's all of the past lives, all of the multidimensional experiences, all of the aspects that are forever recorded in, in the morphogenetic field of uh, our existence, right? Going back to source. And so there's been a lot of um, attention and sensitivity to the themes in these areas, which usually has a lot to do with going internally, you know, getting into the transcendental connections, right? finding a way to give yourself um, over to source or the will of God or the universe um, in an emotional way. And so there's a lot of dreaminess and there's a lot of imagination and and magic in the 12th house or isolation, right? Sometimes you have to get away um, and it's very, it's, it's very spiritual and it's very nebulous and it really um, is, is a lot of things that you can't put your finger on, right? Their notions, their images, all of these Piscean 12th house, you know, it could be expressed artistically. Um, you might just be having a lot of visions, right? Or, or intense dreams. And this has been going on for a while because Pluto has been here for quite a while. And now it's just even more personalized with Venus, with Mars. They're going to come together at the full moon in Capricorn. Mercury is here now um, in a retrograde. So talk about really turning inward mentally and going deep into meditation, into introspection, really thinking um, very deeply and in Capricorn very seriously um, and having goals and ambitions around these things. And also Pluto just doing what Pluto does, total demolition. Because the Aquarius person, as we are embarking on the age of Aquarius and the fact that Pluto is going to come into Aquarius in 2023 for the first time, in any of our lifetime, um, the Aquarius person is going to go through the same metamorphosis that the Capricorn person has been going through since 2008, uh, which is, you know, with Pluto in Capricorn. So it's important to be aware that all of these loose ends, all of these karmic contracts, all of these aspects um, of the unseen but very real spiritual connection we all have has been getting a lot of attention. And this is where the new moon was in the 12th house. And so we'll see that there, they, there will be overlaps from this lunar cycle that we are currently still in. And you can go listen to the report for that, right? The fourth lunar quarter leading up to the new moon. Um, that's going to be linked in the description box below or linked at the end of this video on YouTube. So you can check that out as well. And you can, you know, certainly follow all of the other content to get an idea. But for the Aquarius person, I mean, we're looking at really simply the axis of who you are, and who you are in relation to other, right? It's in the seventh house and it's in relationship, whatever relationship that is, Aquarius, your, your spouse, your <clears throat> any kind of inner close personal friendship, um, a business partner, um, any, any kind of contractual agreement or a committed situation that you are um, personally involved with is the seventh house. You give yourself to the seventh house. And um, I, I, it's going to be a very, um, 
powerful full moon and it may be um, such a wide set of possibilities in terms of um, you know how you f you know how you feel it may be very overwhelming for the Aquarius person in terms of what which direction what am I what am I actually focusing on there's all these possibilities that are lined up in front of me in term and especially about how you feel but remember the original the original intention with the with the new moon which is on the first is to um grow in a way that allows you as a person and your personality to be like a, a sophisticated piece of equipment, right? That can measure the changes in the pressure of the environment. Therefore, um, you are able to make reasonable and, um, you know, forecasts about what to do. It's not so much where we control nature. It's that we utilize the human intellect in order to develop technologies to measure what is happening naturally and to respond to that in harmony. That's the ultimate version of Aquarius here, the highest version. And so this new moon is really allowing the Aquarian person the opportunity to use the very our very personhood to to measure those changes, to, to feel into them. And, um, this is part of the, when everybody is contributing to a social environment, um, all of these variables have an impact on the overall, um, environment itself, just like, and that is certainly chaos theory in a nutshell, right? And it changes. But when you are, um, using some aspect of the human intellect, we're able to not only measure those changes, but to be able to apply our, our intellect and our mental acuity and our actual work or discipline in order to, um, you know, be intentionally in harmony with those changes. And so, uh, but managing that is a different story. And this is where Saturn is. The sun's going to meet Saturn during this time between the new and the full moon. Oh my gosh. Um, and, and, you know, the boss is coming in to start making some, you know, to really wrangle everything and make big, you know, start to make decisions and start to manage the, um, manage the larger whole. And, you know, Saturn is not necessarily a great manager. Um, anybody who is, you know, had a manager and then has a boss or an owner of a company, for the most part, if they're different people, the manager is a manager and they're much better at human resources, kind of like Jupiter, right? Saturn is just, you know, the foot down, right? Saturn is the judge and the um, administration of the law itself. There's no, there's no um, waxing poetic. That's Jupiter, right? That's, that's the realm of Sagittarius and that's the ninth house. But with Saturn, there is a thou shall not pass. And I think that this has allowed for the Aquarian person to hopefully find a sense of inner self-authority that is really needed while the realm of personal power and emotional stability in Taurus is um, changing and actually just consistently changing so that we wake up to um, our to what value really is in this, in this realm. And it's this full moon, it's going to feel very overwhelming, especially I think for the Aquarian person that is, um, sometimes able to be very detached in just who they are in order to be part of humanity, right? The Aquarius person loves humanity is not always the best with humans. And that's usually because you have Leo. And so you're kind of like, I'm in charge. I'm the center of it. I am only as bright as, um, those who revolve around me, um, because the Aquarius person can't get away from, um, their nature being completely tied to having other, right. Um, and I think that there will be an overwhelm. I think I, I get the sense that with this full moon and having it be galactic degrees, as we'll see when I show you the chart, um, with not only the Pleiades, um, but Orion as well. Uh, you know, there's, 
there's a lot of karmic contracts around these stories that the Aquarian person in particular is really, really addressing right now. And this is, like I said, this is, has a lot to do with the 12th house. So what else is involved here? Well, we do see that Venus and Uranus are involved in a trine. Um, Venus by this point at the new moon is moving direct in Capricorn. And so even though, I mean, we, where's our personal power coming from, right? Where's our sense of loyalty and faithfulness? Like, you know, who's got our back and whose back do we have? You know, what's our personal life? Is it strong? Um, and there's a lot of attention here now because this is where um, the nodal axis is, is in the is in the areas of power, uh, personal power and institutionalized power. And for the Aquarius person, having to get into personal power, having to get into just inherent value and into the person that they are, uh, is a little bit more difficult when everything that you know yourself as is, um, in relation to the society or the social environment, um, as, you know, as a whole. And, I think the Aquarian person is going to um, have to really start contending with themselves and where their real power is. Um, get Chiron. I mean, there are so many programs being overlaid on the literal mind of the Aquarius person in every which way you can imagine right now that um, we have to free it because that's one of our minds is like one of our best assets. And it's through our minds that we truly express our authentic nature, which makes sense, right? You see all of the, uh, the sextile to Aries in the third house, and then the trine to G Gemini in the fifth house. These are just personality dynamics that are part of this, um, this natural progression that we see here. So getting, you know, there's this, there's with Venus direct, there is a, um, this kind of like mature sensitivity and an evaluation, right? We've done the deep inner inventory and now it's time to bring that out into, um, you know, making, I wouldn't say making real change, but, um, reestablishing, uh, the value within this realm. Right. Um, and there'll be such a release point at the full moon when M Mars and Venus Venus come together in a conjunction to break free of some sort of oppressive bond. Um, this is a very, this is huge karmic contract or huge karmic release for the Aquarian person. Um, when this happens at the full moon, it's like, it's like the Atlantean contract has an opportunity to be fully just released, um, at the full moon. And so being able to, um, fine tune yourself as your own instrument, as the Aquarian person is really the only, the only, I wouldn't say the only, but the most successful way to go. And, Thankfully, we have Saturn here to give us, um, you know, some authority around who we are, too, because it's it's, you know, once your mind is manipulated or you fall back into old patterns or you fall back into old uh, stories or narratives about yourself and that, that are being imposed upon you or that are get triggered by situations, it's hard to find a sense of personal power and ground and and stability emotionally um, when you are if there is a hologram, right? If there's projection here. If there's false overlay of, of shame and guilt in what you think and what you, the inner dial, you know, the inner monologue, your mental processes, then it's going to be very difficult to find um, true power, like emotional, um, deep power um, and self-esteem and character when you know that it's shifting around and that there is intentionally, um, things that are, um, going sideways in order to wake you up to, um, you know, how stable or not your root system truly is. Uh, so there's something here about taking a very mature and wise and methodical approach in terms of really starting to understand the underlying mechanisms of our own karma um, that is going to really assist in the process of developing our own power now, right? And so it really does depend too, like where you're finding Uranus in your actual fourth house, like where your cusps are that are going to have uh, more information about you personally. But 
just in in general um, this connection from the 12th house over to Uranus. It's going to happen too with, with Mars, of course, over to Uranus and same, same basic, same basic area too. We also see that Lilith is, uh, opposite Venus, but has a sextile to Uranus too. So uh, this is the area that the full moon was in the sixth house, right? Um, you know, the 12th and sixth house were, the areas of this previous lunar cycle and are going to overlap into this next one. Um, and this is about surrender, right? And a lot of it was like surrendering to the, the karmic situation, right? To all of the past, past future, past, present, future, multidimensional karma, these contracts, right? And, and getting into the inner, um, true experience here, um, that is only felt and you can't think about, which is, <laughs> you know, it can be kind of maybe hard for an Aquarius person because so much of uh, the way that expression and the higher mind works is very mental. So, but over here in the sixth house in Cancer is Lilith. That is just like, you know, there's still stuff. There's still stuff at the, the drags here, right? That needs to find its way out, that needs to be expelled, that will be heard, right? Will be acknowledged for what she is. And again, it's, it's, um, the everyday. What are you going to do with the everyday? Um, what are you surrendering to yourself? And again, there's something here that is, um, very much about keeping a sense of humor and, uh, um, being willing to use humor, uh, as a, um, as a, well, I was going to say a defense mechanism, but really just using, you know, realizing that one of the best and most deconditioning things we can do for ourselves is to clown things and to troll things. And it's not meant to destroy anybody else or take power from them. It's meant to use humor as a way to decondition our mind and uh, maintain independence of thought. Um, and, and it takes a certain amount of emotional security to be able to... Um, be, to be able to receive that and also to give that in a way that is not, you know, that is not necessarily trying to damage other people. It's like clowning people, right? It's a performance, but it also represents how important humor and comedy really is to keeping us uh, honest with ourselves. But it does require this type of um, uh, secure and emotionally sustained environment in order to um, participate in that. And there's something very deep that needs to be, um, that's, that's part of, uh, again, being able to maintain one's identity or, and maintain oneself a true nature while, um, the root systems, maybe this is, you know, this, this feels to me like being transplanted, right? When you transplant a plant, you take it out of the soil and the root systems are still there. Um, and if you do it correctly, then you're not breaking them, but you are moving them. And that does have an impact on the whole plant. You know, there's, um, it, it puts resources into that situation where it's been transplanted. And so you got to make sure that it's got all the right nutrients and the soil, blah, 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 all of the things. And, but there's still a shock. We call it transplant shock. And the Aquarian person is just consistently going, I feel like going through that to the point where it doesn't even like, you're just like desensitized to it now. Well, there are going to be things that, um, there are going to be aspects about this that are going to be a little bit more shocking or it's going to be amped up somehow. And part of this is when the sun does come into a square with Uranus also during this time leading up to the full moon. So the, the, you know, in terms of the daily life and the way that you move through your life and the types of practices and the types of routines and habits that you're engaged with and like your healing and your self-care, there's something very deep here that has to do with keeping your mind and your spirit too, because we are talking about cancer, um, and your own sense of, uh, inner power intact and independent and to not lose your sense of humor. And again, this can be invested in into, um, uh, an experience that is, uh, feels like a consistent uprooting, uh, emotionally, um, and energetically 
because when the sun does come into that square, um, I feel like for the Aquarian person in particular, it's going to be very agitating. Um, it's probably going to be more agitating than when Saturn was in a square to Uranus on Christmas Day, because Saturn is just like not moving, right? But the sun is definitely like all, you know, uh, it, it's so much ego and so much like confidence and as opposed to just solid and stable. And so I, I feel like that it could be a lot more agitating and a lot more, um, there, the potential here for, um, uh, <laughs> uh, the potential here is how will we stay quiet about ourselves and keep our minds, um, open about who we are, um, rather than getting pulled into some sort of like drama that's going to really agitate us. Um, I do see that happening as well, um, as we go through this time frame. So again, keeping your sense of humor, allowing this aspect to don't squish it. Maybe it just needs to come out and you need to just be aware of it. Maybe you need to tell some jokes. Uh, maybe you need to find a way to let this energy out in your daily life somehow so that you can um, cultivate your own, your own brand of um, ego consciousness and your own garden of the mind. Because this is where um, I feel like that it's in terms of being emotionally stable is really going to be of assistance. So I think that that's, that's pretty good. I mean, we've seen the major themes here. We know that also too, like I said, the nodes of the moon that are, and they're both in fourth and 10th house. They're going to be making all kinds of connections with Pluto. Who's at the, will be at the return, the Pluto return of the U S in the 12th house. Mercury is going to station direct, um, and come back and make connections with Rahu. Right. And then eventually at the, let's just look at the full moon. So you can see the extent here of the, uh, and Lilith is, is opposite of Venus too. And I think that that's also really important to consider here. Um, so we're not quite there. Let's, uh, go a day. I mean, you can see like all these connections though, just in general, how, um, there's a lot of bold lines <laughs> and that's how, you know, when you see a lot of bold lines every day, you know, that there are major events, uh, that are happening, uh, astrologically. And somebody at one point had asked me if there was ever, you know, if it's ever not intense, I was like, not anymore. And, but some are more than others. Here we go. So now you can see the grand square with the nodes of the moon and the moon, the full moon at these galactic Atlantean degrees of the moon in Leo, um, the sun in Aquarius. This is not only, um, in, you know, conjunct, these are, these are Pleiadian. They're also Orion. They are, um, they are in, um, a square angle to the Pleiades. So these degrees, they're galactic Atlantean degrees, but they're the degrees that are in a tension or a conflict with Pleiadian nature. But what they are in a good, um, or a resonant connection with starseed wise is Orion, right? And so you see where the Atlantean aspect may have, or, or the, the narrative may have uh, failed when it comes to the Orion nature, which is very Gemini, which is very um, competitive, um, which is very black and white back and forth, right? Um, very detached and kind of cold in some ways. I would say that the competitive aspect really, um, will encourage people to battle, right. And to justify their own, uh, takeover of things. Right. So, not to say that that's all Orion's, but there is a distinct part of this. So, here's the grand square of the full moon and then the nodes of the moon, which are very distinctly, uh, not only Pleiadian, but geez, you have the North node at Algol, right? The head of the Gorgon. So for the Aquarius person, when we get to this point, um, it's really going to be along the axis of who we actually are as people and how we feel in, um, 
in our relationships, our interpersonal relationships. Um, and it might be overwhelming, but we also want to keep in mind that that's part of what we, it's, it's data. It's emotional data. It is something that we utilize in order to actually measure the changes in pressure of not only ourselves, but the social environment in general. And so th- this is a conflict nobody's getting out of this grand square uh, at these incredibly karmic star seed connections. So Aquarius uh, of, of all of the signs is, is going to feel it the most um, right into their very identity, um, the nature of where their power is coming from and where it's released and how they feel in their relationships. Um, Uh, Yeah, this is going to be very, very intense. And so um, the Aquarius person um, is going to, by this point, Mercury will be in your, the first house. And so the, the mental energy will, will, will be very focused on the um, nature of who the Aquarius person is. So there'll be a lot of thinking about these kinds of things as this experience comes to a head. So Aquarius, um, you did get a little bit extra. I'm trying to keep these at 20 minutes, but because this new moon is so much part of who you are, Aquarius, I think an extra couple minutes was was worth it. So I'm going to leave it there. Thank you, my friends. Thank you for being here. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. I did that again. So if you are interested in a reading, interested in energy work, just getting more information. Everything that you need is in the description box below. You can join my mailing list by going to catalystenergies.net, which is my website. You can also hang out to the end of this video to get more information um, and also to support this work on Subscribestar. That would be really awesome. It allows me to continue making this content. So until next time, Aquarius, have a uh, fabulous um, rest of your day, week, and I will see you I will see you for the next report um, at the full moon in Leo. Take care, Aquarius. Bye.